Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with the founder of Torch Warrior Wear, Haley McLean. Haley, how are we doing? Hi, Gabriel. Thank you so much for having me. We're doing great. We're doing great, uh, folks. I have met uh, Haley before on a different project. Uh, she was part of helping the, some of these individual the entrepreneurs learn their pitches for Pitch Latino Seattle, which was very successful. And she has quite the phenomenal story. So Haley, please introduce yourself. Who is Haley? Well, um, guys, I'm, I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania. I grew up a dancer, was a very active, and my grandmother, who served 20 years in the Air Force, always instilled in my family the importance of education and doing your best in anything that you do. So when college came around, I decided to go into the Air Force ROTC program at Penn State. I decided to continue my cheer and dance career as a Penn State cheerleader, and I majored in mathematics. So after all the college craziness was done, I went into the Air Force active duty, was a recruiter for a year, moved to California for my last three years of my contract, and then started my business and decided to get out of the military and do that full time. Wow. I mean, that's, that is a lot to do even before you're done with college. I think when I, I didn't go to college until I was almost like 30. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> Like seeing how much you've done in such a short period of time is really, really phenomenal. Now, let's let's talk about you went to uh, Penn State University, you mentioned, uh, and then you went to the ROTC program. What what decide what made you decide to go into that program? Well, you know, I, I did want to get out of Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania is cold. So I did apply to Florida, ended up receiving a full ride scholarship through the Air Force, but they told me I had to stay in Pennsylvania, so an in-state school. So I said, okay, you know, pay thousands of dollars to go to Florida or just toughen, toughen up with the winter. So I decided just to stay there. And I think the reason why I decided to go into the Air Force too was because I got my school paid for, but because I wanted to travel the world and I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do with my life. So being in the Air Force for four years was a good stepping stone for me to figure out, okay, now I kind of know what my passions are and then I can dive into business. And, and through that experience, uh, you, you mentioned you've identified your passion, but then you're also able to find a problem that needed a solution that you created. So tell us about Torch Warrior Wear. What is it? Yes, so Torch is the first clothing brand that is dedicated to making military women feel more comfortable in their uniforms. There's a lot of uniform items that cater more towards men because there's only really 16% of women in the military. It's growing rapidly, but a lot of our uniform items just aren't you know, evolved into what the modern day woman really needs. So the bodysuit is our hero product. We basically have created a product that women can wear in their uniform while they're serving in the military because it's the correct color, the correct cut, everything's in regulations. And they can wear that instead of a boxy t-shirt that doesn't help their performance because ultimately everybody in the military is an athlete and our uniform should enhance our performance. So this is the beginning. We're looking to launch an entire brand and revamp the entire uniform around what the new female warfighter needs. And yeah, we're excited to see where it goes. That is incredible. So, so you know, essentially, folks, it's it's. If you haven't seen the website, I really encourage you to check it out because the colors are really cool. And even if like you're not in the military, to be honest with you, I would not be surprised if my wife would uh, purchase these items as well. But take us back to the beginning when when you kind of realized that there was a problem within your program. What was kind of that in like that moment? That's like you know what? I think I have a solution to this. Well, Gabriel. It started in 2021 when I was stationed at Beale Air Force Base. I was the executive assistant to one of the commanders who ran one of the maintenance squadrons. So they worked on the planes, all the spy planes and stuff like that. And I was his right-hand woman. And when COVID hit, it really, it really put a, I mean, the military and the world really didn't know what to do with our people. So we were working half of the time at home because we wanted to make sure people were separated. And then we were still essential workers. So then we would go into the office, come back home. So it was just like a lot of trying to figure things out. <clears throat> and I just remember 
when I was home, being able to work in something comfortable and not having to put on my uniform that didn't fit me and didn't feel comfortable. I just remember being 10 times more proactive. And I don't know if that's just you or me. I don't know if that's everybody. When you feel more comfortable in what you're wearing, you are so much more productive. So one day when I was about to have to go back into the office, I was wearing a bodysuit and sweatpants, just like a regular girl, whatever. And I just thought to myself, why can't I just make this the right color, the right cut? And nobody's going to know if it's different or not, because it's pretty much a t-shirt. It just will fit me better. And so I decided to drive down to LA on my, one of my off weeks, found a manufacturer. They talked to me about the fabric. They talked to me about what would be needed to create this product because they're all professionals down there. And they helped me make the prototype. And then that's really when I launched it on TikTok. And then the rest is history. I, I love that because you know what you you essentially did is like, listen, I'm going to, I don't know very much about this industry. I'm going to go learn from some professionals and you went out and network. How important was that to network and, and how inclusive were these individuals when they're kind of helping you grow your business? Oh, it's essential. It, I mean, I had no idea what I was doing other than me walking into a mall and purchasing clothes. That's my extent of the fashion industry. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know about hang tags, about, um, how thick the fabric was, anything like that. And so as soon as I knew I wanted to create this product, I just dove right into my fabric company and I just let them teach me everything. And I asked a million questions. I still ask a million questions and we work together as partners, which is nice. And they're just super patient with me. What would you say is one thing that they've taught you so far that has been the most beneficial thing to learn? I think the most beneficial thing my manufacturer has taught me was just overall supply chain logistics and just how to better plan for, uh, you know, if you're launching a pre-order, how long it's going to take and how to launch your product around that. And then also managing customer expectations. Um, and then of course, just the overall understanding of what fabric is going to work best in certain environments and certain situations. And yeah, I mean, you can learn. I mean, they taught me so much. It's hard to pick one. <laughs> no, that's great. You know, and I think what's a nice thing, what you mentioned too, is managing customer expectations. In fact, one of the things you also uh, highlighted was when you launched, you, you launched on TikTok. You launched on a, a social media platform. Tell us about that experience. Well, you know, it's as simple as it can get. And I think that a lot of people have this, thing of like oh you can get so swallowed up by the by the internet or by social media <clears throat> and sure there's it, it is a it's a crazy world but if you have a product that is super niche and it is solving a very specific problem your people are going to find it and they're not going to find you unless you put it out there and it was a super relatable video I literally just put you know my phone up to me I was like who else would want this like I love this wouldn't you like this? It was so simple like that and didn't really put that much thought to it. And then the girls just started to share and share and share and share. And it was kind of the ripple effect. Um, and since then, of course, we've tried to really develop our social media strategy a little bit more, make it more in depth, have ambassadors, um, photo shoots, all that stuff. But in the beginning, it's super like, look at how great this looks on me. And I think you guys would like it. So that was really a strategy. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think it obviously paid off very, very well, because like I was mentioning folks at the beginning of the show is I, I truly have checked out the website and I checked out the items and they are honestly look like things that you would not assume are military driven. Right. Uh, it's it's truly like uh, if you if you know Kanye West recently fashion. So it's very similar to that kind of color and style. I was I was very impressed uh, with how you done it. Now, one of the things you also mentioned was managing customer expectations. How do you do that as a business? Honesty, honesty, honesty. Um, the more you sit and think on a problem and try to figure out the best way to say it to your people, the worse it's going to get. You have to take it in, make a decision and communicate. Even if the communication is, we don't know exactly how to solve this problem yet, but we are working on it. People just want to know that you're thinking of them and it's, it's part of, you know, your team is working on it. So don't sit and think about how to answer it perfectly. Just be honest about where you are and just share increment, incrementally how you're going to solve that problem. Yeah, I love that because at the end of the day, you know, entrepreneurship has challenges, right? They have difficulties. 
Uh, and you mentioned, you know, being open uh, to your customers is one way to, you know, manage those customer expectations. But what about just challenges? How do you yourself as an entrepreneur, how do you, how name list some of the challenges that you've gone through starting this building uh, business and how have you kind of persevered through them? You know, I think that what I have faced, the, the toughest challenge I've faced is financial uh, the balance between wanting to scale and the the balance of trying to build systems and things in place that are going to, it's like the difference between off being offensive on your business and defensive on your business. And so I'm very offensive type of person. I am very competitive. I am like, when I have an idea, I'm ready to go for it. That's the military and the athlete in me. I'm like, let's go, 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 go. <laughs> but but what I've been struggling with is like, you can't always put all your time, energy, and money into moving forward. You have to balance that with systems and uh, trainings and um, just overall, you know, making sure the organization of your company is good to go as well. So in order for me to combat that challenge, I've really had to bring in people who that's their strength. And um, thankfully, I the mil my community is full of amazing military women who are extremely intelligent, super like organized, detailed, everything. And so I really just reached out to my community and people who are part of the brand. And I said, who can help me with this? Because I am totally the offensive visionary type of CEO. I need someone who's going to be that really in the weeds, making sure everything is knocked out the right way. So now I've kind of brought on a COO position and it's helped me tremendously. And we can both live in our strengths. Yeah, I, yeah, I really, really absolutely love uh, you saying that. I'm going to give a shout out Adrian Borsha. I work with her at OHSU. You, she is my COO kind of thinking. I am very similar where I, I'm, I can plan everything and build it, but I kind of need somebody to help me with the operations and make sure that we're doing it correctly. And, and to your point, folks, when you're building a business, the operations is so important because what you really need to be ready to, if, if, you, if you grow 300% overnight, you know, and if, especially if your items are online, which is a possibility, you have to be ready to fulfill those orders uh, within, to, as you mentioned it earlier, you know, managing those customer expectations. And then identifying individuals that have strengths that you don't is so, so important. You know, as I mentioned, the Pitch Latino, we're actually uh, adding a couple board members here soon. And we're talking about what is it that we need uh, help with, right? Is it the operations? No, we have a phenomenal operations. Okay, was well, it, for, you know, raising funding? Maybe is it, you know, leadership? Is it advanced planning? And so identifying, you know, what the board current current strengths are individually, right? As an individual, and then how do we help expand on that, right? Uh, and you you got to be kind of humbled when you do this too, because I think as entrepreneurs, <laughs> you, we tend to go in it with a jack of all trades, master of none. We have to do it all, right, at the beginning. Uh, and then having that moment of like, you know what, okay, I just built my baby, right, your business, now I have to bring somebody in, right? What was that moment like for you that you finally realized, you know what, I do need help, and I need to bring in a C COO? <laughs> um, let's see, the moment when I realized that, I, I feel like I've known it for a long time, <laughs> you know, when you're just like... Sometimes you do, you just you get nervous, yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I feel like I've known for a very long time. And I actually am a, a serial entrepreneur. I have another company that um, puts on NFL cheerleading team retreats, um, because every year NFL cheer teams have to um, do tryouts. And so we do team bonding events for the, the teams. Um, and I have a COO in that in that company, and I don't with Torch. And so what I realized was like, wow, this is running so much smooth, more smoothly over here than me over here. And um, that was kind of like my comparison. I was like, I see physically, like this is working, this is not as much. So that's really how I realized. <laughs> okay, I'm not. I'm not going to let you get away with this. You can't just drop in another entrepreneurial endeavor without me digging into this. <laughs> Let's talk about this. What What is this business called? And, and tell me, how did you get into? You mentioned you're a, a, a you know dance at PSU at, at Penn State. How did you go from that to teaching NFL cheerleaders? Well, Gabriel, I was actually an NFL cheerleader as well. I oh, this, this, this story just keeps getting better, <laughs> folks. I'm like unpeeling an onion right now. This is phenomenal. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, we'll have a couple more layers for you. I got some th- more fun facts down the road. Um, no, I mean it's you know when I when you get out of the college cheer space, there's really only other option is to go pro. Um, and so when I was in the military, I moved to Atlanta, cheered with the Atlanta Falcons, and then moved to Cali and cheered with the 49ers for a year. So I did one year with each team, and I just. I love dance and I'm sure you have your passion. And it's like, this was my opportunity to still be part of that world without actually wearing the uniform because your weekends are shot. You're super busy when you're part of a team. So this way I can come in, meet the girls, meet the team, embark my, and and tell them everything that I've learned from, you know, being an entrepreneur. I love to teach cheerleaders entrepreneurship because we're such dynamic, positive people, go-getter people it's just like athletes, right? Like transitioning that energy into business is, is very transferable. So I go back in and we, we do these week, weekend retreats and um, the teams contract us out just to come in and take that off their plate so they can prepare for the season and we can just help the team bond. So the, te- the season's a lot more fruitful and, and fulfilling for everyone. So yeah, kind of like event planning. It's more of my passion project. Um, we have two retreats this year with the Falcons and the, and the Vikings and hopefully we can just continue to grow. So. I love it. And, and, you know, you mentioned, you know, you have your passion dance folks. I got to tell you, my passion is our beloved Raiders and it's breaking my heart that you did not dance for our Raiders, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll let it pass this one time. You had, look, you had Jimmy G, Jimmy G. What's going? We both had Jimmy G. So we can both bond on that. How about Damn, that? Fair, fair enough. Fair enough, man. That is great. And, and, you know, I, I really, it is really interesting because I, I love it how you call it a passion project, but yet it's still, you know, one building a network and growing and, and learning. Uh, and you also do this with entrepreneurs. Another thing you do is you help pitch, you help coach a, a pitching. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Gabriel, that's, um, it's new. It's new. I think that I've seen success on Shark Tank. I've seen success in other pitch competitions. And I just, I'm like, okay, maybe this is something that I'm good at. You know, sometimes when you're just like, I guess I'm good at this, even though you don't really think about it. And um, I have a business coach and she told me you should look into niching down into helping other people win pitch competitions. Because as you know, when you become an entrepreneur, everyone wants to know, oh, how do you do this? How do you do this? And you, you could, you could get into business coaching, which is very broad and all that stuff. But I think I really want to specialize and like really help people win pitch competitions. So that's where I specifically, that's where I've seen success. So I just like to offer my services to pitch competition hosts, um, to high schoolers, people who are looking for fundraising and just give them that entertainment value to their pitch and um, the storytelling aspect so that they can really get the funding. You know, you just, again, folks, she, she keeps throwing in these little golden nuggets she thinks we're not going to listen to. One of the things you just talked about was how successful you are in different competitions, including Shark Tank. So talk about how you have built your brand through pitch competitions and talk about some of the pitch competitions that you've gone through. Yes, yes. Um, pitch competitions, man, they are so, they have allowed me to build extremely positive relationships um and also have allowed me to get out of some dark times financially without having to take hours or months filling out grant applications um so i at first i applied to the veteran shark tank pitch competition that's specifically for veterans um and it's very small stages of their business the the prize was a fifty thousand dollar grant and i just saw it on instagram and i applied and i just was like Hey, we'll see. I've never done one before, but I, I need to get myself out there, especially to my community, especially if it's a military focused pitch competition. This is perfect. So I got chosen to be one of the top five, went up against an army veteran, a couple Marine veterans, um, another Air Force, vet, actually, I think it was just Navy, Navy, Army, Marines. And I was the only Air Force girl and um, we had five minutes to pitch. And what I did was dive deep into YouTube and just like, how do I craft this? How, you know, pulling from a billion different pitches. I'm like, okay, this sounds good. And I just kind of went for it. I brought in models. Um, I, I kind of really tried to bring that entertainment value, value to it. And we ended up winning the 50K. And that really took us into an incredible direction with just like notoriety in the military space, which helped so much. So that's one piece of advice I'd give to people like find pitch competitions. Yes, but also find them that are going to make sense in your niche because then people will know you in that space. 
Um, then I got reached out to by somebody else from the Founders Live. I'm not sure if you ever heard of Founders Live, Gabriel. I have not. No. Um, another kind of pitch se pitch competition sequence. Um, found that out from a friend who I cheered for in the NFL actually, and he was like, "You should totally do this one." So I did that one too, and I blew flew to Minnesota, flew to Minnesota, yeah, and did that one. And I was like, okay, that was cool. Another just experience. And it was a different space other than the military. So I didn't know how I would be received, but we won that one also. So I was like, okay, like we've got something here. Like the military likes it, regular people like it. Okay. And then that's why I decided to apply to Shark Tank. I was like, all right, I think I have a use two use cases. We have some traction with sales. I think this is a really great story. I'm going to apply. And that's when I went through that entire process. I hired a Shark Tank coach. That one was, I really dove in deep to make sure I was extremely prepared, um, you know, prepared for probably three, four months, did the show and ended up getting a deal with Lori, which was awesome. You guys got to watch the episode on Hulu. It's, it was, it's nerve bite. It's nail bite. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we, since then, it's been incredible to be able to have her mentorship and also to be surrounded by other Shark Tank entrepreneurs who are super go-getters and just like very passionate about helping each other. And so, yeah, now we're just continuing the grind. Of course, it never stops, but it's like, it has allowed me to grow very fast um, in my, in my space. I love it. I, I really, it's such a, such a cool story. And folks, uh, if I can find this information, this is a great time to plug the newsletter for the Shades of Entrepreneurship. I will have Haley's information, including this information about her Shark Tank episode on the newsletter. So go ahead and visit the shades of e.com to subscribe to that. And, and, you know, it's really interesting because I, it, it, pitching really is kind of an art. You know, and, and, you know, with, like I was mentioning, our Pitch Latino competition in Seattle, very successful. I'm going to let you guys know we're actually going to be doing Pitch Latino Bend uh, later on this year, as well as Pitch Latino Portland. So we have two in Oregon. And I'd really encourage you to get out and try to pitch your, your, uh, pitch your idea. Uh, another thing we're actually creating is... Um, uh, pitch and pints. And so really just, Hey, let's go meet at a local uh, Latino owned bar here in the Oregon area so we can help support them, but just come throw your ideas out. Let's just chat about your ideas. Uh, because mm -hmm. I think, think what Haley also, um, you know, organically talked about was finding her product market fit, you know, through pitch competitions, uh, one, she found it. Okay. I see that the, uh, the, the veterans are, are a market that enjoy it. And then you said you went out to Minnesota and now, now the even the general population is also and again, folks, this is what I was telling you, I checked out the website, I do believe it's cross trending into multiple cultures. Uh, and the fact that you're able to also get it, or maybe I guess is a question, because uh, you mentioned, you know, the art, the, you know, the, the military does require certain fits and certain colors. Is this approved by the military to use in military service? It is. Yep, yeah, all over the world. See, mm -hmm. And then, again, that is incredible, because Folks kind of think about, okay, well, I'm never going to wear a military suit. And next thing you know, you're wearing freaking cargo pants with all the camouflage. I remember the 90s, folks. <laughs> Still have some Doc Martin sandals. That's probably why I have calves that look like I've been riding bikes my whole life. And that's for another day. That is for <laughs> another day. But yes, you know, show the calves. Show the calves. <laughs> but, but, you know, I really do. I, I really encourage folks to get out and network and, and build that because, asking people outside of your inner circle if your idea is is a good business idea is important because the the feedback you get from those is very important now one of the things you also discussed was mentorship uh, you have a mentor and a business coach uh even michael jordan kobe bryant the best that ever did they had coaches how important has that like the mentorship and coaching aspect been for your professional development mm again, an essential part of anybody who wants to grow in any aspect of their life. Just like you just said, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. I mean, anybody, you know, is going to have a mentor. Um, it is the light. They are the light when you don't know where to go. They are the um, slap in the face and they're like, all right, you need to get it together here. Um, I, again, am a former military officer and also an athlete. So I kind of like the tough love. I'm like, tell me if this is a stupid idea, please. And so you want to find somebody who works well with you. And that doesn't make you feel like you have to be somebody else, but they're trying to make you the best version of you. And so 
you have, again, product market fit, mentor, mentee fit is extremely important as well. Um, finding a mentor, I found one through my Penn State network, which kind of, which I, I thought that was great because they know who I am and they've known who I, who I am, especially back in my college year. So there's um, a, a common, a common just denominator there. So looking back in your college space or your high school, somebody who um, you know who knows you to your core. And so, I mean, shout out to Shannon Grace. Um, that's my business coach and just has been from, with me every step of the way. And the cool thing about it too is she kind of becomes your therapist in the way too. I mean, business, as you know, it's not just all about what's going on with your business. It's how is your personal life affecting your business positively or negatively? And how can we all the whole entrepreneur concept, I like to say, so. Yeah, awesome. that, that's that's a great concept too, and, uh, because at the end of the day, and that's why it's also important to have that exit strategy, right? Because usually the exit mm-hmm. strategy also happens because of a, a personal life moment, right? Maybe somebody expired or your business partner retired or, uh, you know, a pandemic, right? So there's always uh, some type of life. So just being prepared. And that's, again, going back to the conversation Haley and I were having about the operations, right? You know, having that all ready to go. But, you know, thinking about the future. Thinking about not because you you have multiple businesses. So thinking about you, Haley, where 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 are you going in the next five years? Where do you want to see Torch Warrior Wear and your other businesses in the next couple of years? In the next couple of years, I want us to be a well-oiled machine. I don't want to have to feel this like, oh, go, go, go. I want to have some solid systems in place where it's like, this is how we're rolling out products. This is what conferences we're going to. This is like our annual events. Um, you know, we have all of our people in the place where they need to be. And um, when people come in, I'm really big on fostering community in my leadership team and just making sure there's this culture of, you know, we're honest, we set, we, you come in, we work hard and, but we also are a family. And so um, I want to really be able to give and because I'm a new entrepreneur too, you know, three years in, I, I still like to say I'm, I'm still learning. I really am. I want to just feel more confident in um, my decisions that I'm making as an entrepreneur. And I think with that will allow me to build better relationships outside of my business. And hopefully we can collaborate with awesome brands and bring some really unique, um, fun, unique things to the military community. Um, and personally, you know, I'm turning 30 this year, dirty 30. So I am looking to start a family and, you know, do that side of things as well. So I think it's going to become a balancing act, but um, I don't think you have to choose. I just think that it's just, again, managing expectations in your personal and professional life and um, continuing to create at your own speed. Oh, I really like that. Create at your own speed. And and I agree, you know, life is just one great balancing act uh, pretty consistently. Now, one of the things you mentioned is, is you've been doing entrepreneurship for about three years. You're still learning, right? You look, But in those three years, you probably have learned quite a bit. Ooh. What advice would you give to <laughs> aspiring entrepreneurs that are listening? To all of the aspiring entrepreneurs out there, man, get ready for the ride of a lifetime. And if you do choose to go on this journey, I highly encourage, I mean, (laughs) that's a tough one. I mean, there's just so much there. There's so much there. Um, I think the first thing you have to do is find either a community of entrepreneurs or find your own personal business coach. That is first and foremost. Um, You cannot do this alone. You absolutely can't. And you shouldn't. And you should really prioritize building as many relationships as you can. I wish that I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur back in middle school so I could start really knowing everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's really what makes your business run and go and, and grow and be successful is the quality of your relationships. And so you have to love meeting new people, putting yourself out there, but also fostering the relationships that you have built throughout your life. So um, whether you're looking for investors from old coaches or um, old business partners, whatever, just know that life, is, everything comes around 
karma is real and just understand that what you put out there in the world love positivity hard work it will come back to you um it will come back to you so keep work you're gonna work hard um but always choose to do the right thing be honest and um surround yourself with go-getter people that is that is number one Love and hard work will always come back around, folks. I really, really do love that. Now, folks that are interested, Haley, in, in learning about more about you, maybe learning more about one of the two companies or multiple companies and continue to watch you grow, how can they get in contact with you? What is the Torch Warrior Wear website? How can they purchase some of your items? Yeah. So I have a one-stop shop website, HaleyMcLeanHill.com. You can go there. You can find Torch on there, so you can set free. Um, I speak also. I'm a professional speaker. So if you felt motivated today, I can motivate you. Let's into- go. I like Woo! it. My cheer side. Um, but yeah, or you can head over to Torch, TorchWarriorWear.com. We're super big and um, present on Instagram too, at Torch underscore Warrior Wear. So, nice. Yeah. And if you guys need a calf model, I'll, I'll jump on stage for you guys as well. Just show them. <laughs> oh, Haley, thank you so much for joining the show. We have fallen off the rails at the end, but it was a great show. Again, thank you so much for what you're doing. I, again, I really looking at your clothing item. I think it really does cross train a lot of different cultures. Uh, and it, it, it's probably really, I think, really well needed uh, within the military uh, service line for the female uh, service uh, women uh, that are in that area, because it, Again, uh, to your point of feel good, like look good, feel good kind of thing uh, and, and having having clothes that makes you feel good. I think you were more productive. I, I certainly think so too. Uh, that's why I enjoy not having to wear the button up suits all the time. But hey, sometimes I have to and that, that is what it is though. So <laughs> Haley, is there any last words you'd like to say to the listeners? Well, first of all, Gabriel, thank you so much for having me. This has been a pleasure. Um, I really appreciate you listening and just offering this awesome podcast to everyone. Um, To everyone listening, you know, I think at the end of the day, you can listen to as many podcasts as you want, but at the end of the day, get off your ass and do something cool and you can only learn by doing. So go do something with this information and um, be bold. Yes, be bold and never stop creating. Uh, Seriously, let your kids draw outside the lines. Uh, Let them color uh, with multiple different colors and different abstractnesses and really encourage it because that's where innovation truly happens. Folks that are listening, please visit theshadesofe.com to sign up for the newsletter. You can also visit us at The Shades of E on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Again, this episode will be on YouTube as well as audios. So again, please check us out at theshadesofe.com. Thank you and have a great night.